Hello students, welcome to today's class. What we are going to study in today's class is the factors involved in the perception of symptoms and the accuracy of symptom perception. We all know that symptoms are crucial and beginning points in the illness experience and also decisive factors in determining the seeking of help. The Oxford Dictionary of Psychology defines a symptom as a subjective implication of a disorder as reported by an afflicted person rather than the observation of an examiner. There are certain important points that we need to focus on in this definition. The first is that a symptom involves a subjective or an individual implication of a disorder. It is a subjective phenomenon and depends upon the individual's own analysis of deviances from his normal bodily state. The second thing that we need to understand is that it is the judgment of the afflicted person that is the individual which again reiterates the subjectivity of the symptom experience. The fact that the symptom perception is a subjective experience automatically leads to the notion that the response to the symptom will also differ from one individual to the other. For instance, for the same symptom, some individuals may respond very quickly, they may recognize a symptom and immediately seek medical help. Others may totally negate the implications of the symptom and avoid seeking medical help. Whereas a third group of people may actually go into alternative modes of seeking help. For instance, taking recourse in traditional or folk therapies or taking the help of other therapies such as relaxation, meditation and the like. Thus we know that as individuals differ, the factors that influence the perception of symptoms also differ. And what we are going to do now is to have a look at some of the factors that influence our perception of symptoms. Let us see some of the factors involved in symptom perception. The first is the degree of body awareness. Individuals differ from each other in the extent to which they are aware of their own bodies and of their own physical states. Some people are extremely and acutely aware of their different bodily states and the changes in their physiological functioning. Consciously or unconsciously, they chronically monitor even minute changes in the functioning of their physiological systems. For instance, varying degrees of fatigue, small changes in the ability to move about, small twitches or spasms in the muscles or small feelings of blushness or paleness of the skin. In fact, they are more likely to appraise even minor changes in their bodily states and tend to report a great number of symptoms and also tend to report them in a great degree of detail. But what should be understood is that such a chronic observation of one's own physiological state is in a way a kind of disability or disorder in itself. This is because it can only amplify feelings of discomfort and disability and also lead to an obsessive concern about one's body. There are some other individuals who are hardly conscious of what is taking place in their body or their physiological symptoms. They may take a long time to recognize a symptom and even if they recognize a symptom, many a times they hardly notice it enough to seek medical help. People also differ in the degree of importance that they assign to different symptoms. For instance, some people do not assign any kind of importance to certain symptoms whether minor or major. They tend to feel that nothing wrong can happen with them. They tend to negate the implications and the possible consequences of a symptom and hence rarely seek medical help. On the other hand, there are certain individuals who are quite vigilant and as soon as they spot some kind of deviation in their normal functioning, they may immediately seek the advice of others or medical help to evaluate as to what is actually wrong with them. A personality factor that can be involved in the perception of symptoms is neuroticism. Neurotic individuals are generally anxiety ridden, they are apprehensive, they are insecure and they are overly sensitive. Hence, in most cases, they are likely to appraise a large number of symptoms and tend to overemphasize and overreact to even minor symptoms. This tendency is present especially for those diseases which they already possess rather than newer diseases. Depression. Feelings of depression are another major factor that can influence your perception of symptoms. 
individuals who are depressed not only perceive a larger number of symptoms but also they perceive increased threatening and harmful consequences for these symptoms. This is because people who are depressed are already in a negative affective state or in a negative mood. Hence they tend to be attracted to all that is seemingly harmful and threatening and also tend to interpret the environment including the symptoms in threatening ways. Another factor that can influence your perception of symptoms is the salience or the special features of the context or situation in which this symptom occurs. Symptoms are more likely to be recognized when they occur in contexts where issues regarding health or body integrity are already in focus. For instance, a person has a friend or a loved one who is suffering from some kind of disease or illness or has died due to a particular disease. Such a person is more likely to focus on those symptoms which are especially associated with that particular disease his friend or loved one suffered or died from. Have a minor resemblance to such kind of diseases will be taken in very seriously and will be overreacted to and the person will seek medical help very soon. The threshold of discomfort that each individual has differs and this is one of the factors that influences his perception of symptoms. Some people have a very high threshold of discomfort or that they can tolerate high levels of pain and uneasiness. Such people are even likely to regard symptoms of moderate intensity to be very inconsequential. On the other hand, people who have a very low threshold of discomfort or pain tend to perceive these very moderate symptoms in ways that are more threatening and more harmful. Our childhood experiences in terms of how we saw our family members as also other members of our society and cultural group react to symptoms, how we saw them perceiving the symptoms whether acknowledging them or not or whether we saw them seeking help for the same or not, how we saw them responding to them whether it was an exaggerated response or whether it was a mitigated response can influence to a great extent our own responses to illnesses. People from communities where illnesses are taken to be as very important and symptoms are responded to and overly reacted to tend to follow the same pattern in their own lives. The circumstances of an individual's life can be another factor that can affect symptom perception. For instance, a person who is extremely busy with work in the family or work at the workplace will have little time to notice minor or major changes in his bodily functions and hence he is less likely to perceive symptoms as compared to another individual who is relatively idle and is engaged in some kind of boring or dull routine. Such kind of individuals tend to focus a lot of attention on their bodily states and over scrutinize it. Hence, they may even perceive symptoms which are not really important. Gender is another factor that can influence symptom perception. Research evidence reveals that women are more likely to perceive as well as report symptoms as also seek health care as compared to men. Now, this can be due to the operation of stereotypes which we have internalized in the society. For instance, men are seen to be more sturdy, hardy and incapable of any kind of weakness or illness. Hence, due to the internalization of this stereotype, they may be less willing to say that they are feeling ill or to seek help regarding the same. Cognitive factors can also strongly affect an individual's perception of symptoms, especially how he perceives the symptom. For instance, a number of injuries or tissue damage can be seen as extremely positive by a soldier who has survived war. Because these injuries and damage tell him that he has survived the war and he is going to go home as a hero. On the other hand, similar damage sustained by a surgical patient or a patient who is a victim of an accident, they will see it as extremely debilitating and a disadvantage and a totally as a disadvantage and a total deviation from normal functioning, which may depress them a lot. Other cognitive factors also play an important role. If the symptoms are such that the individual can recognize them on the basis of his past experiences and especially if he sees them as minor, this can to a great deal affect his perception of symptoms. Also symptoms involving salient parts of the body which are of great importance to us as normal human beings, for instance the face or the eyes are more likely to be perceived as important and health care will be sought more often. Similarly, symptoms involving vital parts of the body, for instance, the heart and the blood, at least in layman's terms, we see it as most vital. 
Symptoms involving these parts are more likely to be recognized and attended to. On the other hand, symptoms involving relatively stigmatized parts of the body such as the anus, the genitalia and other private parts are less likely to be recognized or even reported. The characteristics of the symptom itself, the inherent characteristics that a symptom has can also influence whether or not a person perceives it. For instance, if a symptom is so large that it interferes with the normal functioning of the individual in a significant manner, then it is quite natural that the individual will notice it and seek help immediately. Also, symptoms which are frequent and recurring, they come again and again. Such symptoms are more likely to be recognized and help is more likely to be sought for them. On the other hand, symptoms which are intermittent or which occur once in a while are more likely to be ignored. The socioeconomic status of an individual surprisingly is, is also a factor involved in symptom perception. For instance, people with a higher socioeconomic status tend to perceive even minor symptoms and tend to report these symptoms and seek the best medical care. On the other hand, people from a lower socioeconomic status tend to negate most symptoms as being less threatening and less harmful and negate the implications of the same because they believe that it is not worth approaching medical care every now and then because it incurs a lot of expenditure for them. Another demographic variable which can influence symptom perception is age. Research evidence suggests that young children and older adults tend to frequently report a greater number of symptoms and are more willing to seek help. On the other hand, young and middle-aged adults, particularly males, something which we mentioned before, are more reluctant to seek help. This may again be the operation of the male stereotype as being invincible, strong and sturdy, which is an operation. Stress is also an important factor which can influence how you perceive symptoms when you are experiencing a stressful situation. Stressful people generally are in a negative affective mood like depressed people. Hence, in most cases, they are likely to perceive a large number of symptoms as threatening them because they are already in a state of preparedness to deal with such threatening events. Further, they are more likely to see all these symptoms to be harmful, threatening and debilitating. However, something that must be noticed in the effect of stress and symptom perception is that the number of symptoms that stressful people enumerate may not always be related to associated physiological deviations. Sometimes it may be an emotional need for help or an emotional call for help in the stressful situation. The person's level of knowledge regarding the symptoms regarding what the symptoms are about, what are the possible consequences or implications of the same, whether right or wrong, that is whether this knowledge is right or wrong, can be an important factor in determining his perception of events. For instance, if a person attributes the causes of illness to supernatural or other such causes, which is a wrong knowledge, still he will be more reluctant to seek medical care. Fear is an ultimate factor that prevents both the perception of symptoms as well as the acceptance of the presence of such symptoms. Many people, most of us in fact, fear medical procedures and treatments. And hence, because we are afraid of medical procedures and treatments, we tend to negate all the symptoms and tend to say that no, nothing is wrong with me, all these symptoms mean nothing. This is just because we want to avoid the situation of visiting a hospital and undertaking some form of medical care. Now that we have gone over the first part of the chapter that we were going to discuss, that is the factors in symptom perception, we come to the second part, the accuracy in symptom perception. And unfortunately, research evidence suggests that people are not very accurate in their perception of symptoms, especially when the correct perception of symptoms is seen as the amount of correlation between the actual physiological states underlying the symptom and the person's self-report of that state. Accuracy in symptom perception can be defined as the correspondence between a given physiological state and the individual's perception of that state, something which I explained earlier. Now we know from the last section that a number of factors affect our perception of symptoms and the greater the number of factors, the greater is the chance of inaccuracy. In measuring accuracy, it becomes necessary to objectively measure both the individual's perception of a given physiological state 
as well as an objective measurement of the physiological state as the individual is actually experiencing it. One of the first attempts to address issues of accuracy and one of the first attempts to measure accuracy was made in the 1930s by social and personality psychologists. They were interested in knowing as to how accurate an individual is in his or her perceptions and to what extent judges can accurately perceive the emotional and personality characteristics of individuals. However, a number of issues arise in this. For instance, when can we say that a person is accurate in his perception? Or who can judge perfectly whether or not the perception is accurate? In addition, there are a number of scaling and methodological issues as well, which exist in many kinds of psychological research. And the fact is that through the 1930s till now, many of these issues still exist. Two general methodologies are used in measuring the accuracy of symptom perception. One is the between subjects design and the other is the within subjects design. Let us see briefly what happens in these designs. In a between subjects design, a single measure of a given physiological state and a single measure of the individual's perception of that state is taken from a number of individuals and the results are correlated across these individuals or subjects. In a within subjects design, multiple measures or indexes of a given physiological state and multiple measures of the individual self-report regarding that physiological state are taken from the same individual and the results are correlated for only that individual on a case-by-case -case basis. Although a between subjects design controls for most kind of variations, especially random variations such as the effect of practice and fatigue which we see in within subjects design, still between subjects design is a weak methodology for measuring the accuracy of symptom perception. And the use of between subjects design has found a consistently low correlation between the existence of physiological states and the individual self-report of these states. This may be due to a number of possible reasons. Firstly, subjects are given self-report techniques for measuring the extent to which they perceive certain symptoms. For instance, a self-report measure would involve options such as agree, slightly agree, moderately agree, disagree or slightly disagree. What participants generally do is that they tend to concentrate their responses on certain areas of the scale. For instance, the bottom part of the scale, the middle part of the scale or the topmost part of the scale, leading to erroneous responses. Secondly, there are a large number of differences in an individual's baseline physiological functioning. For instance, there are two individuals. One has a baseline heart rate of 60. The other has a baseline heart rate of 90. Now, during the laboratory situation, if both of them have a heart rate of say 75, the person with a heart rate of 60 will tend to respond that this is an extremely high heart rate, whereas a person with a heart rate of 90 will see it as an extremely low heart rate. Further, subjects also tend to define symptoms in varied ways. And when their definition of symptoms differ, the possible accuracy in their description of symptoms also tends to differ. For instance, researchers have found that different people differ in the way they explain shortness of breath. For some people, shortness of breath means fast and shallow breathing, the kind of gasping you have when you climb a flight of stairs or you have run for a long time. Whereas others take the same shortness of breath to mean slow and labored breathing. Such differential definitions of the same symptom will automatically result in differences in the accuracy of symptom perception. The within subjects approach towards measuring accuracy in symptom perception avoids a number of scaling, baseline and definitional problems that exist in a between subjects approach. However, a drawback exists because we cannot control for certain effects, especially random effects such as the effect of practice and fatigue. For instance, when you are taking repeated measurements of the same individual, the individual has a hang of what the situation is about and he has a level of practice which may influence his responses. 
Further, an individual who is again and again giving the same self-reports will also feel fatigued, which can also affect the accuracy of his responses. Two within subjects paradigms have been put forward by psychophysical research, paradigms which according to them can maintain accuracy. One is to control all the surrounding situational factors, including factors such as practice and fatigue, manipulate only the stimulus situation so that the individual's responses to that situation can be recorded. However, such kind of situations do not exist in real life situations of the real world. And it is not possible in actual physiological and psychological research with extremely changing situations to put forward such objective and scientific psychophysical practices. Another within subjects paradigm is to measure the individual's responses across situations. For instance, you may inject the person with some kind of a substance, say insulin, or you may have an electrical stimulation of some part of the brain and this may continue for some time so that the individual feels that the situation is changing. In recent years, the within subjects approach towards measuring accuracy that is in use is to measure the physiological state of the individual and his self reports of that stage at the same time. For instance, Epstein and Fenz conducted such an experiment by measuring the accuracy of responses in novice parachutists that is those who are not very experienced and as also experienced parachutists. They tried to measure the extent to which these parachutists felt afraid and stressed before and after jumping on 14 occasions. However, the results revealed that there was a lot of inconsistency and inaccuracy in their responses. However, those parachutists who were novices tended to be more accurate in their responses as compared to those who were experienced. The possible reason is that novices tended to feel and explain their physiological states as they actually felt it. On the other hand, those who were experienced had learned to suppress their actual physiological feelings because this would facilitate undergoing extremely stressful maneuvers and procedures during parachuting. Researchers are interested in finding out as to whether situational or contextual factors will lead to an increase or decrease in accuracy among individuals. For instance, do situational factors such as an extremely high level or an extremely low level of arousal affect the accuracy in symptom perception? A lot of research reveals that a high degree of arousal can lead to a greater accuracy in symptom perception. For instance, a person is more likely to perceive pain if he has a major injury rather than when he is just pricked by a pin. However, the fact exists that in real life situations, we rarely have such kinds of high levels of accuracy. We only have normal fluctuations in accuracy. However, the fact exists that in normal life situations, we rarely have such high levels of arousal. We have only normal fluctuations in arousal and hence it becomes difficult to determine what is the said impact of arousal on accuracy? Several researchers in recent years have also attempted to find out whether dispositional factors such as the degree to which you perceive your autonomic system responses or the degree to which you report your symptoms or the degree to which you are extremely self-conscious or your personality variables such as type A or type B personality can have an impact on the accuracy in symptom perception. Research however has produced largely inconsistent results and many researchers in recent times found no significant relationship between the amount of these characteristics and the degree of symptom perception. However, certain other things were also noticed. Type A individuals generally tend to be extremely driven, ambitious and aggressive. Hence, they are less likely to perceive symptoms and also perceive symptoms accurately when they are engaged in some kind of work. And when they are engaged in that kind of work, they will not concentrate on anything else, however serious it may be, till that work gets over. All this discussion about the accuracy in symptom perception brings us to one premise that 
Accuracy in symptom perception is not a unidimensional approach, rather it is a multidimensional approach involving the operation of a number of factors. Hence, some individuals may be disposed to greater accuracy in symptom perception in certain situations and for certain illnesses, whereas other individuals may find a greater accuracy in other situations and in case of other physiological distress. What we need is a mathematical model that can encompass all these complexities of accuracy in the process of perception of symptoms. The individual factors, the contextual factors, the cultural and social factors and the personality variables that are involved. The thing is that evolving such a mathematical model will be a complex task. But as and when such a model evolves, the accuracy in symptom perception and the measurement of the same will receive a great impetus. Thus, in today's class, if we try to conclude whatever we have learnt, we have learnt about how important symptoms are, how individuals differ in their perception of symptoms, what are the number of factors operating in our daily lives that influence this process of symptom perception. Further, we also noted that individuals differ in the extent to which they are accurate in the perception of symptoms and most of the times they tend to be inaccurate unfortunately. We also found out the difficulties in measuring the accuracy of symptom perception, the difficulties in scaling and methodology and we focused finally on the need for the development of a mathematical and objective model that encompasses the many complexities involved in measuring a constantly changing physiological and psychological phenomenon.